Observing our world, where happiness is bought in chocolate bars of 100 grams, manufactured in Belgium with Ghanaian cocoa, delivered on Korean ships in Danish containers, and distributed to local supermarkets, I thought, while consuming that chocolate bar during my high school years in a small Italian city, that philosophers and artists were a bit out of touch with reality. I used to have an extremely capitalistic view of society, a view in which something is meaningful only if it makes economic sense. Almost nobody liked to study philosophy, Latin, ancient Greek, and history of art back when I was in high school, and also the teachers were very bad at communicating its importance. But after years of pondering, I came to the conclusion that philosophy and art can yield either extremely positive outcomes or extremely dangerous ones. Let's take a look at how they influence our life. 1. Memories as a Proof of Existence if we could summarize the last few thousand years of human history, philosophy is our thinking, and art is the physical creation of thinking. In most cases, philosophy is the message in which our memories, emotions, and knowledge are stored, and art is the communication channel with the subsequent generations. While reconstructing the course of our history, art is the only memory that remains from our ancestors, often the only proof they existed. From the hieroglyphs in ancient Egyptian temples describing the life of the pharaoh to the last photos we have from our loved ones, like in the movie Coco. Art makes everything and everyone live or last forever, provided we have at least one copy left. In the current capitalist environment, consumable products like food are being eaten or wasted, phones are being used and trashed, buildings are being built and then demolished, but a piece of art like a poem and a song can be read or listened to from any century, and by listening to it, we will listen to the culture of those who lived before us. Imagine working all your life to build a home which will be sold by your kids after you die, or demolished by the government to build a skyscraper in that area, completely erasing all the efforts of 40 to 50 years of work. The truth is that everything we create, as humans, is destined to be waste, decay and trash in the future. We live a life among disposable objects, while trying to create something that can last forever before we die. 2. Source of Ambition and Storage of Feelings Our life choices are significantly determined by philosophy, which defines the borders of our ethics and morality, rights and duties, and what is considered lawful in a society. Meanwhile, the arts determine the shape of the buildings we live in, and the things we can enjoy limitedly to the laws we democratically chose to follow. Art can feed our ambition. Alexander the Great grew up believing he was the son of Zeus, descendant of the mythical hero Hercules, who killed the Nemean lion with his bare hands, and Achilles, hero of the Iliad, who led the Achaeans to the victory and capitulation of the city of Troy. Alexander the Great always carried with him a copy of the Iliad during his war campaigns. Had he not come across this book, would he have been inspired to achieve all the accomplishments he did? To be honest, the mythical hero Achilles conquered a city. But a real man, Alexander the Great, established an empire from Greece to the highs of the Himalaya. The real history of this man surpasses the literary fantasy of his heroes. Did your life change significantly after stumbling upon a piece of art that surprised you? I'm giving you some examples of how my life got shaped by art, so that you too can relate and write it too in the comments. I lived and traveled throughout Finland and studied Finnish because of a PC game about rally in the snow, and because of the respect I feel towards the Finnish people, who fought against the Soviet Union in World War II. I traveled and lived in Vietnam only because of the songs of Sun Tung, and because of the respect I feel for the Vietnamese people, who defeated superpower nations like France, the United States, and China. The movie 300 and the character of Leonidas offered me an idea of a man I like, respect, and want to become. A strategy game called At War made me curious about the world and made me aware of how ignorant I was. Now, I speak seven languages. I implemented quotes of different authors in my life, from Gandhi, the Buddha, Sun Tzu, Socrates, Nietzsche, and many more. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. How did art and philosophy change you? Art is the hard drive of our feelings. If I ask you, what songs do you associate with your friends, with an ex you love deeply, with your partner or spouse? What food, smells, colors, objects, or gifts do you currently associate with your parents when you were young? 
Which books or words give you anxiety about your college exams or high school? Which movies, songs, or games give you nostalgia about your past? I have many songs. Each one reminds me of a particular period of my life, and so do you. Now, pay attention, because now we cover the very dangerous aspects of philosophy and art. 1. We buy things we don't need, with money we don't have, to impress people we don't like. Chuck Palahniuk, Movie Fight Club The favorite trick of our capitalist system to make us avid consumers is to create desires in people to make us buy things we don't need, taking advantage of the irrational and emotional part of our brain. To create perfect ads, marketers cooperate with all types of branches of artists to understand how to use the right color, write musical notes, how to create the perfect ambience to make you feel comfortable inside of a shop to make you spend more. They cooperate with writers, neurologists, and all type of psychologists to understand which words can suscitate the most emotions in a given context for a given product. They already know what you think and all the possible reactions based on your gender, age, religion, political views, etc. because they have access to all the statistics in the country. And this is delivered in such a way that it's legal in most countries. Sometimes, marketers are guilty of causing addictions to the consumers, like gaming and gambling addiction, food addiction, shopping addiction, etc. We talk about the same marketers that in supermarkets put slow music to make you relax, put the most expensive products on the shelf, which corresponds to the average height of the population. So if you want to buy a cheaper product, you have to bend down to the ground. The same marketers that also put candies at the height of kids at the cashier counter so that kids can grab all the candies they want and annoy their parents until they purchase them. Data Manipulation As mentioned earlier, a historical event can exist only if there is art remaining to support its existence. But what if a civilization never developed art, or it was conquered by a stronger civilization? The saying, history is written by the victors, now becomes clear. At the end of a conflict between two factions, the winner is the writer, and the loser gets all the blame. Have you heard of the quote, Who controls the past controls the future, from the book 1984 by George Orwell? The winner can also destroy all the proof, the art that can refute his lies. In addition, the winner can also issue new rules to prohibit the loser from speaking up by coercing through fines and jail time and therefore modify history in such a way that the winner is the good faction. Another issue can be misinformed and miseducated people who use art to protest and spread their opinions about topics too complex for their understanding to other people who understand even less, which produces a democratic issue when these people go to vote. Or politicians that promise absurd things with very short slogans that touch the irrational parts of our brain like, eat the rich, America first, on your side, not to plastic, and so on. When no conflict is ongoing, no democratic governments, like the government of China, often decide to limit their population's freedom of access to internal information through censorship or limit foreign information into the country through restrictions on geographic data. This manipulation can happen through the limitations of freedom of speech and freedom of expression, removal of fundamental files and documents through the release of fake science and statistical data, or collection of false data to make everything seem okay in the country so that the citizens don't feel like protesting. Essentially, citizens are being forced to believe in a fictitious reality. In the worst case scenario, Evil thinkers such as political leaders, religious leaders, dictators, and authoritarian parties may spread their philosophy of hatred through a type of political art called propaganda, by telling their citizens that they are the superior people, and as such, they must conquer the inferior people or physically eliminate them. This has already happened through history many times. I cannot pronounce the names of these leaders due to the demonetization policies of YouTube. Therefore, I let you guess who they are and what they did. In summary, we need consumable products to live. Philosophy and art is the only product that can possibly last forever. Philosophy is used to determine the laws, ethics, and morality. Art is used to create legal entertainment for the citizens. Art can stimulate our curiosity and ambition, and can be used to store our feelings into a concept we call nostalgia. The unfortunate downside of art and philosophy is manipulation. They can be used to trick us into spending unnecessary money, get into debt, 
or even become victims of addiction. In the very bad case scenario, governments may manipulate the information and history to prevent people from protesting, and in the worst case scenario, political leaders with despicable ideologies may use propaganda to convert the masses into heartless people, which can lead to millions of deaths worldwide. Did you enjoy this video? Please give your honest opinion here below. Thank you for watching.